we're going to be learning how to prove that a triangle is right angled or perhaps that it isn't right angled. So the learning intention for today's lesson is to develop an understanding of Pythagoras' theorem and use the formula to prove whether a triangle is right angled or not. And the success criteria is that I know the formula a squared plus b squared. I can label the sides of a triangle a, b and c and I can substitute the values of the into the equation to prove if the triangle is right angled or not right angled. So Pythagoras was a mathematician who came up with a special formula to determine um, if triangles were right angled, but also you could use his formula to find unknown side lengths in triangles. So today what we're going to be looking at is just whether or not a triangle is right angled or not. So obviously this little symbol here means a right angle, which is an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so it's also known as a right angle. We already know this. So what we need to do is we need to use Pythagoras' special formula to prove if this is right angled or not. So Pythagoras' special formula or his theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now this is something that you need to make sure you write down because we're going to use this over and over and over again. This is his special formula that we need to know. So each one of these letters corresponds to a side in a triangle. So for example, if we have this triangle here, this is our right angle. C is always our longest side. Now there's another word that we use for this. So not only is this the longest side, the word we use is the hypotenuse. So that's just the fancy maths word for the longer side. Now there's a third way we can actually remember what C is, other than it being the longest. It's that it's opposite the right angle. So we can actually turn this right angle into an arrow and it points to our, help, our hypotenuse. So another way you can remember it is that it's opposite the right angle. And this is always true in a right angle triangle. The hypotenuse is always opposite away from the right angle. Now the other thing that we need to know is what these two other sides are called. Now we've got A here and B. So C is always the longest side, A and B. It doesn't matter which one is which, but A and B are always the shorter sides. So that's the term we use for a side that is not the hypotenuse. We call it a short side, okay? And you can see that it is shorter than the hypotenuse, so therefore we call it a short side. Okay, so if we think back to our learning intention, it was to be able to prove whether a triangle is right angled or not. So what we're gonna do is our first example, we're gonna start with a triangle And we've got a right angle. Oh, well, actually, no, we don't know if we've got a right angle, okay? So we wanna try and decide whether this is right angled or not. So I could assume that this is where the right angle would be because that's the one that looks like a right angle because these are obviously both acute angles. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna say this is three centimeters, this is four centimeters, and this is five centimeters. Okay, so that's the triangle we've been given and they're the dimensions that we've been given. So our goal is to now try and prove if this is right angled or not. So the first thing we need to do is write down Pythagoras' formula. So if you can remember back, the formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we need to make sure that these sides correspond with this formula here. So the first thing we need to do is label the sides. So we already learnt before that the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle and that it's the longest side and that that is called C. So out of these sides, the longest side is obviously five. And if we'd assumed that this was a right angle, which is what we're going to do, then this would have to be C. So I'm going to label this C. And we also said that 
These are the short sides and they can be called A and B. Now it doesn't matter, this could be A or this could be A, it really doesn't matter, but I'm gonna make this A, I'm gonna make this B. The second step after we've labeled our sides and written down the formula is to substitute. So that means changing our letters into our numbers. So the pronumerals get substituted with the value. So A is going to be changed to three, that becomes three squared. B is going to change to four, that becomes four squared, and C is going to change to five. Now, I've put a little equal sign in here, but to be honest, we don't actually know if these are equal just yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to work them out one side at a time and then determine whether they are actually equal. Okay, because for it to be a right angle triangle, they do have to equal the same. And that may not be the case here. So what we can do now is we know that three squared, three times three gives us nine. Four squared, four times four gives us 16. Nine plus 16 gives us 25. All right, well, let's have a look at this side. Five squared, which is five times five, I know that is 25. So in this case, we can say that these are equal, okay? Which means, therefore, it is a right angled triangle because both sides are equal. So you could put in your little right angle if you wanted, and that would be true. Okay, so now we'll move on to our second example. This time, I've got a triangle that looks like this, and the dimensions of the triangle are going to be seven meters, 11 meters, and 15 meters. Same with last time. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write down that formula you should write down your formula every time just to make sure you're doing things correctly. So A, B, and C, the next step is we need to label our sides. C being the hypotenuse and the longest side, obviously 15 is now gonna be C, okay? Because 15 is the longest out of those sides. Remember A and B, they're our short sides. It doesn't matter which one's which. I'm gonna make this one A and I'm gonna make this one B really doesn't matter, it's up to you. Next thing we need to do is we need to substitute our numbers for our letters, okay? Our numbers for our pronumerals. So A is gonna be changed to seven squared. B is going to be changed to 11 squared. And C is going to be 15 squared. So we've done our substitution, now we need to solve and see if both sides do equal the same thing. So 7 squared is 49, 11 squared is 121, we add those together, we're going to get 170. Now 15 squared, I don't know what 15 squared is, so you can use your calculator to help you work that one out. 15 squared is 225. So in this scenario, seven squared plus 11 squared does not equal 15 squared. So we would say they do not equal the same thing. So if they do not equal the same thing, then what we can say is therefore not right angled because they don't equal the same thing. So it means that this cannot possibly be a right angle triangle, even though it might look like one from the way I've drawn it. Okay, this is the last example that we're gonna do in this video. So this time, we can make our right angle triangle look however we want, really. It's mostly about the labeling. So this time we're gonna have a triangle that is five millimeters by 12 millimeters, and then this side's gonna be 13 millimeters. 
Right, by now we know the first thing we need to do is write down our formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The next thing, label the sides. So c is the hypotenuse, the longest side, so out of these three, this one is the longest, so I'm gonna make this c. Remembering a and b, there are short sides, it doesn't matter which one's which. You can choose whichever one you would like. Next step, we're going to change our pronumerals into our numbers. That's called the substitution. So we're gonna change a to five squared and b, we're gonna change that to 12 squared. C is going to be 13 squared. Five squared is 25, 12 squared is 144. Adding those two together, we're going to get 169. If you don't know what 13 squared is, or if you don't know what any of these are, you can use your calculator as you go along. 13 squared is 169. So we can say these are equal. So if they're equal, what does that mean? It means it's a right angled triangle. And that is how you prove whether a triangle is right angled or not. So if you want to have a look back at the start of this video, you can look back at our learning intention and success criteria, which was to be able to use the formula to prove whether a triangle is right angled or not. So in this case, it is. And your success, and your success criteria was to know the formula, be able to label the triangle, substitute the values and find whether it was right angled or not.